Is Ian joining us, Narelle? Yeah, is um, we're just two minutes away. No worries. Okay, cool. Um, are you still with us, Philomena? Maybe getting. Yes, I am. But uh, on my background, I think Taryn is speaking for people like connect and stuff. So yeah, that's what I just muted it. <laughs> if that is. Oh, like... oh okay. Have you got two meetings at the moment? Yeah, but Kuma is uh, listening to that. So that right, was at right, the background, right, right. like best past Taryn was talking to all the Vibra Lake leaders. So we right. can So that's what I muted it. If I had to talk, I'll turn it on. Otherwise, okay. it'll be interruption. No uh, worries. Other than that, we are all doing good. Uh, we stopped Emmanuel from school, so he's home. Uh, so managing two toddler with my mom. Yeah. <laughs> and me and Kuma in the same room studying together. It's not working out that well. <laughs> uh, bless you. Well, well, we'll keep you in prayer, that's for sure. <laughs> that's for sure. Hey, um, Caroline, do you mind uh, just praying for us, opening up in prayer for us, uh, but also um, just... Um, just praying for some of the people who are unwell at the moment. I know there's some sickness in Jacinta and um, uh, Michael's house. Uh, the kids are a bit sniffly. They've, I know they've had them um, getting them checked and doing everything they're supposed to do. And I'm sure they're going to be fine, but we just want to petition uh, and maybe just cover anybody else in that as well. If you could okay. pray for us. Okay. Uh, let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we humble ourselves before your presence this morning, Lord. King of kings and Lord of lords, we just want to glorify and honor your holy name, O oh God. We come with thanksgiving in our hearts, O oh God. We come with praises, knowing, Father, that you are in control, knowing, Father, that you love us, O oh God, knowing, Father, that you are ever powerful, O oh God, and you are for us, O oh God. We thank you this morning, Father, that you brought us again together, Father. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you, Father, for the gift of friendship and the fellowship that we have. We thank you for this college, oh God. We are here to sit at your feet, oh God. How we pray that the Holy Spirit will lead us this day, oh God, that it will minister to each and every individual, oh God, wherever they are, in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. Heavenly Father, we just want to remember Jacinta and, and the family, God. We thank you, Father, that by your stripes you are healed, oh God. We want to declare healing upon that family in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God to declare strength in their bodies at this time in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. Heavenly Father, we have hope in you, oh God. Heavenly Father, we pray that we are going to hear a good report, knowing that, Father, you are in control of everything, oh God. Even the situation around the world, oh Father, we are just calling upon your name. We are praying that you open heaven, oh God, that your kingdom will come, my Father, that your name, Jesus, will be praised, oh God, that people, Father, will get their healing, Father, and that you will minister, Father, to those even who lost um, loved ones, oh God. Heavenly Father, we just submit to you. We just surrender everything, oh God, knowing that you are in control, that you are, your promises are true and amen, that Father, you are the only one we can lean on and you promise to be with us, oh God. So have your way in this meeting. Be with us, Father. Bless us, oh God. May we learn from you today and may you continue guiding us. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray and believe. Amen. 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 Very good, very good. Cool bananas. So, um, so I'm quite excited for today uh, to hear about everybody's one-on-one -on -one evangelism opportunities from last week, from our job um, description that we had, where we mapped out how to have a, a conversation with somebody, where we set ourselves up, where we get prepared, where we get ready, and then we can... Um, you know, minister to somebody and share the gospel. So, um, so, so Neil, how did you go? Uh, no, not very well at all, Aaron. Like I said, I'm, I'm isolated, um, and I know that I'm coming up with great excuses, but um, the more I can stay home, the better. Okay. Um, um, well, you know, for my for my safety, for my health, and everybody else. So, if you recall, I wasn't um, I wasn't no, no, I, suggesting I, anybody yeah, goes out and <laughs> infects anybody. We we had a no, big no, no, I understand about that. that. Yeah, I understand that. Um, we have been we've got a community page here in North Yandera, Um so I do keep an eye on that, and I have mentioned on that community page 
um, that if anyone wants prayer, you know, hold them where I'm from and who I'm from, from, you know. Yeah. And um, yeah, so you know, I have made a mention on the community page that if anybody wants prayer, then let us know. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, it just be nice, whatever they want. So, uh, well, that, yeah, so, so that could I, be a. That could be an opportunity, Neil, to maybe once a week decide to put a, a bit of an encouragement on there, not a, because it's not necessarily the platform for it. Um, yeah. But perhaps you could put an encouragement on there, um, even if you were to um, go through your, with your devotions or whatever, and maybe paraphrase, uh, you know, the the content that you're you're reading, and just to send a word of encouragement out to people, and that yeah. might open up a door where people comment and give you a chance to then. Um, talk. Remember, we talked in the last week the pattern in John four about um, about uh, positioning yourself, um, and then the icebreaker, and then about the intervention. You turn you turn the corner, and then the spiritual intervention. So you turn the conversation to to godly things. So you could start yeah. with just um, encouragement, and then work from there. There's uh, always opportunities, and when we've got time on our hands. Thinking up the the opportunities is certainly um, you know we've got time to do so. So uh, yeah. I yeah. just encourage you to look for ways. I, again, just to reiterate, I'm not suggesting oh, that no. anybody goes out to shopping centres or public spaces or calls people to gatherings that goes against any. That's not at all what we talked about last week. We talked about one on one evangelism from our from our homes, from the, the, the post box to across the street, from the back fence over to the neighbor. That's how we talked about it. So, uh, or, 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 you know, a Facebook platform in which we use the same technique that we read about in order to share the gospel. Carolyn, how did you go? Um, <clears throat> okay, so I've been going to work and um, um, I remember, I think it was on, Wednesday, um, I was sent to a ward, uh, a cancer ward, and uh, we had these three patients who had come into contact with an um, anesthetist who was positive. And so, okay. like, yeah, they were first contact with the coronavirus. And um, so I was given these three patients to take care of. I think uh, the, the ward nurses, I don't know, no one was really maybe up to it or something. They were scared. And so I just remember, <clears throat> like, the the cleaners, yeah, the support staff who are working with us, uh, they were really so scared. They were just, uh, they are elderly. They were just like, you know, worried um, of maybe getting the disease, knowing that the cancer patients are already like, um, the immunity is already very low. So um, I just had a chance to talk with one of the support staff. She was really very worried and uh, I just encouraged her and, um, okay, um, she was just asking me how I was, you know, because I was the one entering the room anyway, and how I was managing to do so, and I wasn't really scared. So I was able to tell her I'm really trusting in God, and uh, that is right. my only protector, and um, that is the only way, because um, uh, maybe we can wear so many things, but we can't really protect ourselves. And she was keen to listen, because it's like she was really ready, she was really scared. And I remember when we went on break, I, I was able to just encourage her and just tell her even like uh, it's good to even pray before coming and ask her about her um, salvation story and yeah so and we didn't wow. really go so much further yeah so and so I just kept encouraging them and you know she was really yeah. kept, kept coming to ask me questions and I was just yeah telling her so, great yeah come so on really, so good uh, yeah, that is yeah. awesome so yeah. so good and that's um it's 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 good isn't it how god gives us opportunity and it's through your hope your faith that going okay well this is something that everybody else is sort of crippled by fear and worry and da 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 and you just go you know what lord i'm going to hand this over to you you're going to have to protect me and just that spe speaks just volumes to the people yeah. around you and then they come seeking very cool yeah. Yeah. and that's that that's that step one that's that positioning yourself by going oh, lord you know, I'm going to step out and I'm going to put myself into a, a place where there's opportunity for you to shine. Um, and very cool. What a great testimony. Thanks. Yeah. That's very good. Jeremy, how have you gone uh, in the last week with uh, the John 4 platform of uh, evangelism? Um, 
it's a bit difficult where I live. Yeah, you, your neighbours are a little bit further up. away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're like really spread apart. And yeah, for those that don't know, uh, Ferrami's house is like a five, on a five-acre lot uh, and it's right in the middle of the lot. And so you, your neighbours on each side, you would probably... It's like a whole cooey. Yeah, get your I message across. Like a good jog before <laughs> I be like sweating one. And I haven't really seen any of my neighbours like actually leave the houses. Like, and if I do, they're all in their cars or like on the other side of like the house or something. Yeah. Um, so does that mean that you're painting signs? <laughs> oh, actually, I've gone for smoke signals. All right. <laughs> Um, no, but um, it's the sign. Jesus to... loves you. Jesus loves you. <laughs> Just as a driving. Yeah, yeah. And they're like, who's that guy in the blanket with the cardboard <laughs> sign? <laughs> they're like, call security. Like, oh, man, you need to. Um, <laughs> no, I've gone for the approach of. Uh, just kind of messaging friends that I haven't really spoken to in a while. Oh, especially ones that I know I probably should be talking to a bit more and then using like corona times as like a reason to kind of reach out and just talking to them about like how I've been calm in this time yeah great just talking to them about like what's been going on with church how we put stuff online how we're using things like zoom to connect with each other and encourage each other and yeah, just asking them if they need prayer for anything. Yeah, yeah. right. Very not good. sure like what the return is like, but hopefully, yeah. You know what? It, it's it, it's interesting because when you read um, the 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 John four thing, it says about how uh, she ran back to back to the village and started talking to people, um, and it says that they that that she was trying to get them to come to meet Jesus, but we don't really know how many people came and, 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 you know, we don't always know what the fruit is. Um, but in actual fact, what you just described was actually the pattern that is described in what we talked about last, last week, because you, um, you know, you're ringing people up. So that's your positioning. Uh, you were talking uh, about a common theme, the coronavirus. So, so that's your icebreaker. Uh, and then you put the, the, the turning the conversation um, to the godly things by talking about, um, you know, your relationship with God. And then you've added the spiritual intervention by the comfort that he gives you. Uh, and then you've given them a next step by inviting them to watch online. So you've actually, just that is actually hitting every, every, um, every box that, that was presented um, on, the, on the scriptures. So uh, very cool. Well done. And, you never know. You you might get a text this week from somebody who, you know, had an encounter, watched the sermon, something like that. You just never know when uh, when things are going to hit, and um, yeah, just don't know. Just don't know. Very cool. Um, Ian and Narell, how did you guys go? Ian, you go. You go first. Is um your daughter's partner saved yet? <laughs> I'm working on it. Uh, no. I've been been praying daily for that for that to take place. He, so he's still interested, um, but cautiously interested. That's okay, because yeah. I have to, because um, he's sort of like a supervisor above me, so I have to deal with him regularly. Sorry. It's okay. It's okay. Keep going. Keep going. Anyway, uh, yeah. So I've had a couple of other interesting things pop up. Um, I haven't actually had to seek people out. They've come and sought me out, which is kind of cool. Um, <clears throat> a bit worrying too, really. Um, <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I'm not, not meaning a stampede or anything. No, I was just working away and, and some guy in the, in the warehouse uh, turned up out the blue with no pallets on his fork truck or anything. And he hopped off and he's got, started unloading all of these personal problems and, and um, saying that I'm the only one he can talk to about it. So we started sharing, which was pretty good. But the supervisor came around and said, hey, none of this sort of thing. Yeah. Mm, that's okay. I've got a door open there. And um, uh, I think I should give him 
initially a book on the five love languages, but he needs more than that. To be frank, I think he needs professional help. So I'm going to, uh, I've got a name of a counsellor that I think I'll give him. He's a really good Christian counsellor. Right. So we can feed into him at the same time. I had another chap as well come up quite worried. He's one of these cool dudes that's got everything sorted. And he came and came and approached me in the warehouse and wanted to talk about the coronavirus thing and how we felt. So that was pretty cool. Um, yeah, I think people, some people are starting to get scared, whereas they weren't before. At my night work, no one was scared because they all had their work. They all had their work still. Um, so it was just something that was out on social media. But now that now that they've been told that they have to separate for smoking time, mm. <laughs> affect them and they're starting to get a bit scared. So it's pretty cool. I join them for smoking. I hate the smoking, but I join them anyway, just in the hopes that I can start a conversation. Yeah. Uh, not, not you don't join them in smoking, right? You just join them whilst they're smoking. <laughs> I've got this joke going that that I'm just a, a cheapskate, and I, I prefer to do it by passive, passive smoking. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we go along with that for now. Yeah, but it's good. I can see opportunities opening uh, to share. Right, pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know what, that again, that's, that's what it's all about. It's about this evangelism is an intentional approach. So uh, it's about getting us to a place where we actually see the opportunity because um, unfortunately, most, um, most Christians walk through their life without even being aware of the opportunities to share their faith because it's not in the forefront of their mind uh, because lots of us are taught and, and um, to um, kind of take Christianity as a, what God can do for me, as opposed to what I can do for God. Uh, and, and, and that's, um, you know, I get it. And that's sort of what we, how we kind of perceive God and how we're brought up and so on and so forth. Uh, and, and some of what can be picked up from ser sermons we hear and that kind of thing. But um, that whole being aware and seeing the opportunities and going, okay, there's an open door here and I'm just going to tread lightly. I actually uh, take quite a lot of encouragement from uh, when you talk, uh, when you talk about these things, um, uh, Ian, because you, you, you kind of, I'll just, I won't push too hard. I'll just, just a little bit at a time and just there uh, are, uh, and I can be a little bit overzealous sometimes. Um, so I go, okay, I might just take a little bit of a, a, a leap out of uh, Ian's book and just, if the door's there, let's keep Play that door up. open. I think there's a place for both. Um, but I know I've got a captive audience there. They have a captive yeah. group of people. And so I figure I will take the um, nibbles approach. Well, maybe not nibble, that's too small a bite, but you know what I mean. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It's good. Approach and um, try and not get them offside. And I haven't got them offside yet, which is pretty cool. It's very cool. And when, you, and when the people are coming to you it yeah. means they can also see something that they want they might not even know what they see they might not even know what they want but they can see something mm. and that's and that's god in your life and that's mm. a comfort and a, and a joy and a and a grace on your life that they can see whether it be the supernatural vision whatever it is god's doing something that's drawing people in and they go okay Okay, cool. God's definitely got me here for a reason. It's not about the job I'm doing. It's about the job I'm doing, you know, like the ministry that God's called you to. Um, yeah. and, and, and that's exciting. Really yeah. exciting. Yeah. Very cool. Makes the evenings worthwhile. Yeah. 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 That's right. You're not just going to get a paycheck. You're going to grow the kingdom. That's, that's awesome. I love that. Very, very cool. Watch this space. <laughs> very good. Um, Narelle, how about you? It's been um, an interesting week. Um, our daughter, Talia, and her partner, Alvin, came over Saturday. <clears throat> he doesn't have any family here. So they're turning every Saturday night to come over and have family time. And then they stay overnight and we spend um, Sunday together. Great. Um, but he's in that horrible position of bridging visa, um, so he's not entitled to any payments, absolutely nothing at the moment, no job. So we've been trying to sort of give him some advice. But I said to him the other day, I said, we're actually praying for you. We're praying 
for your situation. And he was really open to yeah. that. He was really thankful that we'd been praying for him. Yeah. Um, but what about other kids that sort of is struggling at the moment? They just about, they turn and they looked at me like, you said the P word. So it was just like, <laughs> <laughs> yep, got you too. So <laughs> Yeah, right. Dealing. So they're, so they're getting the, they're taking after Ian, getting the, the passive evangelism. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, the passive evangelism. So, um, but one of the women that's at Ian's work, she's on our Facebook page, and um, she at first couldn't cope with what I would post on our page. And she said to Ian, "Well, gosh, your wife's really churchy." So <laughs> she is, but anyway. But she's still there. Two years later, she's still on the page. She likes the stuff that I post. So, you know, I'm, we're feeding in that way too. So Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't like it. Tell me more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very good. Very good. With people with their fear. That and how we respond to them when we're out in, in being served by them this way. That was my, um, my heart and my challenge this way was you still love them, even though they, they don't want to come near you, they don't want to handle the products you're purchasing. And um, Bizarre, it? it was just, yeah, that was really hard walking through that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. But it. keep encouraged. This is um, God's opportunity to do um, amazing things. And, and in that, um, you know, one of the things that depletes and one of the things that, um, that, uh, fear saps is hope mm. um, and so you know one of the things that we can bring even just in a short conversation at the supermarket getting your groceries is hope and that can come from um, you know something as simple as uh, you know reminding reminding people that um, this isn't forever mm. you know this is this is not forever this is you know this will be over there you know that they are safe that they're you know, I think a little bit, a small word of encouragement goes a long way and yeah. um, fear depletes hope very quickly. And yeah. so our role is to help bring that hope back in and, and, and hope leads to faith. So that's our starting block. Is yes. that hope something or maybe, maybe there is a God that's got this under control. So um, just bringing that and not allowing what's happening outside to, um, to influence you but being the influence is yeah. um, is the key. But yeah, that's awesome. Very cool. And I love um, strategically uh, putting that yeah, uh, you know, the son the son in law to be or the, the daughter's partner is over on a Saturday night, which means they're there for church on the Sunday. Very well, clever. Watched, um, the kids' church. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> on for Jaden, so um, they were there, and our grandson he watched that. Um, but when it came to church time for us. Yeah, they yeah. Didn't know that. So we snuck off to our room and um, we did church. Right. What the, the the kids one? I watched it on Sunday. It's still a gospel message. It's a it foundational is. gospel message. Yeah, yeah, it's done really well. Yeah. Uh, and and I would say that even if they were thinking they weren't listening to it, it was ministering to them anyway. Absolutely. So. Um, and imagine that for a testimony. Imagine being able to <laughs> imagine being able to say that he got saved from kids church. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Ah, yes. Yeah. That would yeah. be awesome. Good. Love that idea. Good. Very cool. We're just um, we're going to keep praying. I'm just going to keep praying for Alvin and and uh, you know, for you guys to keep doing what you're doing. And I know that that's gonna there's going to be breakthrough there. You watch to be a testimony uh, of God's goodness yeah. um, when he's in church, pr hands raised, uh, praising God. Uh, and, and telling people about how, uh, you know, there were some people in his life that just invested into him when he was in a hard place and he could see God in them. You watch. That's the... Yeah. I know it. Good. I know it. Yeah, it'll be good. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Philomena, tell us. Don't fall asleep. I know you're sitting on your bed. I can tell by the background. <laughs> fall asleep. You're going to be... No, because I had to come out of the room. Otherwise, it's <laughs> too much of noise there. Uh, I also yeah. like how you've got your Fortnite headphones on for your gaming. <laughs> I'm sorry. Kidding, They've been using for a long time these days, uh, for too often, I guess, more than usual. 
Um, so I had to, uh, one is one of our friend, uh, she was a Buddhist before, but we were like speaking to her and uh, she accepted Jesus, but she's a single mom with two kids. And recently we got to know that she lost the job because of, she was working in the airport uh, duty free shop. So she lost the job because of the old airport closed. So we were checking on her and we got to know and she was in a really hard place because she got like a, everything sort of seems like stuck for her. So we were like really be able to give that hope and like, you know, keep going. We, we guys, we are with you. And we were like even offered to get food or anything that she need for the kids. Um, so we constantly checking on how she's doing. Um, and because, you know, in this time, even you become like a new Christians, they tend to feel like what's going on and, you know, that question comes up. Uh, so we really wanted to check on all the new Christians who are going through issues because they are in a very early stage yeah. of understanding the faith and going through this because when they become Christian, there's a one sort of expect in their heart is to uh, sort of believe that everything will be fine won't we have yeah. any issue afterwards so we would really want to check on her another uh, person kind of got really i like thing to me when i was uh, so we have a study group for my course so now we are a lot of time yes coming together in zoom or in collaborate or something like that so this particular girl i'm meeting every day and i can kind of hear from her it's like a lot of like you know you are good at it i'm not good enough oh, i can't do this i don't know how to do it all these sort of anxious and like always this feeling of that she's not up to the standard sort of thing she always mentioned in her words so i felt like that you know god really like wanted me to connect with her so i was kind of really connecting and helping her out a lot and i will always tell her you know don't compare with anybody else and you know you got something special in you and let's find that out and if you need more help we can work together so i was just giving her a bit more extra time to spend with her and kind of because we are study group we only talk about the assignments and tasks and everything so i just felt like i want to get to know her better for her to identify because i felt like i was i still do sometimes struggle with that same mindset like mm. not good enough but when i see her i felt like i've seen her long time back like myself so i felt like that this is the time to you know build relationship with her and to kind of speak to her to yeah. her spirit yeah either. um yeah because she's she's 20s and i think um, her feeling of not be able to do it is really hard because i think she got some great, great qualities in her yeah mm. yeah so, yeah. so we, are, we are making much more time with her and kind of help her with the studies plus kind yeah. of help her with finding who she is in god yeah very good and that's it and that's um that's a very important thing to do and to help people through that uh, that, that sort of thought process to capturing our thoughts the bible talks about that and and that we have to take every thought captive and um you know and even the story in john 4 of the samaritan woman that we uh, read uh last week where um you know jesus pointed out about her and her husbands multiple husbands and all of that yeah. um so that the, you, you can guarantee that um that lady had some issues in terms of insecurity about how she felt like she wasn't good enough and felt like she, uh, you know, maybe failed and all of this kind of thing and, and would definitely have felt like a bit of an outcast in her society and that she didn't match up and she wasn't, um, you know, as good as everyone else and you, everyone else can do it but not me. But Jesus still said, yeah. I, I, I will give you uh, water that you will never thirst again. If you drink of me, you will, you will. So he was still available and that's, you know, that's an encouragement, I think, to people who are thinking that way and feeling that way and to ourselves as well that it's not about merit it's not about um you know what we can do or how good we are I, that's not even on the table when it comes to 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 our relationship with jesus uh, and that's why it's that's why it's grace you know grace is a gift we don't deserve you know yeah, um so grace is that whole thing of getting something that you don't deserve and mercy is not getting what you do deserve you know, so we, we, we do deserve to uh, be outcast and pushed to the side and to, you know, most of us have, you know, done things that would, call, you know, reasonable for separation from God. But that's where mercy comes in and we're not receiving that punishment because he bore it for us. And then the blessing he adds is the grace. Um, so that's a real encouragement that you got. You being able to invest into her in 
um, and try and encourage her in her walk. To find Very herself. cool. Yeah. Yeah. Because I've. I feel like sometimes God indicates when you talk to him to sometime, like as if they, as they stalk, they don't realize it, but kind of God indicates that that's where that he wants to work on it. So it really helps us to spend a bit more time on like really encourage them in that part, whatever they're thinking yeah. that is actually not, uh, that's not the way God thought about her. Obviously God thought of her that she's wonderfully created. That there's something really special that, that nobody has it in the world. So yeah. And I really wanted her to see that part of it. Yeah. And that's a great point that you're bringing out there as well. It's not even so much that um, in, in who she is, but who she is in God. Mm. So, that's you know, because that, that's the important thing. It's not about our own power and our own sensibilities and our own abilities. It's actually uh, who has God created me to be and who does God say I am? And I'm actually going to put my, my foundation and, and my faith in what God, who God says I am, not yeah. the measure to the world. So um, that's yeah, really cool. Very yeah. cool. Well done. Well done. Very good. Cosmo, <laughs> are you with us? Yeah. Yeah. How did you go this week with our uh, John Four um, setup for uh, evangelism and uh, either you know family members or neighbours or friends online or something did you have an opportunity to um outroll the strategy um well the neighbors is a bit hard because similar to Faramir, i live in a five acre block so neighbors are quite far away yeah but uh i think the family in here is seeing what me and uh, my wife are doing and like we had church in our room and we had the door open and it was on loud. So her brother stopped by for a second yeah, and showed it like showed some interest and then went on what he was doing. Yeah. Uh, that's good. That's still, that's the positioning yourself. It's cool. Door open, nice and loud. Uh, the icebreaker and turning the conversation to God. Uh, a minute of interest is better than no interest at all. Right. Mm. Yeah. And what else are you guys seeing? We're seeing more panic in her father, which I think we're just kind of counterbalance, like trying to counterbalance that and reassure that he doesn't need to wear gloves and a mask and glasses to the shops because that's going to make him look a bit of a weirdo. But yeah, it's just trying to feed positivity when everything's a bit negative. Yeah. 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 I think the, um, sometimes, the, like you say, is the, the, even if you're seeing um, what looks like um, regression, like looks like fear increasing and all of that, sometimes that can actually be a good thing um, for the option to get the word of God in there because the more somebody feels less, um, the easier it is to bring hope. Um, you know, they, they are, it's that old saying, um, best position in which to pray from is on your knees. Mm-hmm. Um, so, it, you know, if he's getting to a place where he's getting really discouraged and really, you know, sort of set back and, and worried and stuff, I think um, it's a great opportunity for you guys to be able to set a standard. But um, if you're intentional about it, so if he's really concerned about all those things, my, my encouragement would be um, don't go uh, flippant on the protect side so the gloves and all of the masks and all that sort of stuff i'm not saying do that i'm just saying um perhaps um look at uh, trying to accommodate his fears but encourage him around that they're sort of like why you're not worried or why you have um you know comfort in that you you guys are safe you know like so um but I think it's an incredible opportunity to speak through action as well as word um, and, and for opportunities to, um, again, sort of like what I was uh, expressing to Leah is maybe even putting in, um, you know, if with your devotions and stuff, you can come up with ways to um, paraphrase or, or to put to, um, you know, everyday situations. So rather than, you know, it's the whole concept of if you read read from the old King James, nobody knows what you're saying. Um, but if you put it into a temporary application, 
people can pick up what you're putting down. Mm. You can get people on the same page as you uh, when you when you do that, and it's good for us to 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 really um, absorb that in. Um, and it's like coming up with a story or or a, um, you know a testimony of, of somebody and looking for those opportunities. Um, but it sounds sounds good. Sounds like you're uh, trans transforming the family bit by bit, which is very cool. Very very cool. And and are you guys okay with Bob and doing well? Yeah, we're doing well. Yeah. <laughs> getting any <Yeah>. sleep? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm getting sleep. The other, <laughs> my wife and baby aren't. Oh. <laughs> but. Yeah, she the baby has no care in the world, and I'm thankful that she's at the age she doesn't understand what's going on. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's good. Very cool. Very cool. Okay, so um, I want everybody to continue on with the John Four outline as a guide, as a help to look for opportunities. We've had a, it's just actually been good to. And one of the reasons why I go through and get everybody to share is uh, there's a few reasons behind it, but it gives us a little bit more um, uh, ability to look outside our own thought on how it should be done and go, oh, I didn't, I didn't think about that. And um, maybe those the barriers I thought were there aren't actually there. And just because I can't get out of the house doesn't mean I can't actually, uh, you know, evangelize. I can still share my my faith and if I am at work here's how I can do it and if I'm stuck at home here's some ways how I can do it and there's people around me that you know and, and it's all about being intentional looking mm. for the opportunities and positioning yourself for that so um, uh, you know especially if you've got uh, extra time on your hands and not everybody does but some people do because they're you know at home and and, and can't work or can't whatever there's a great opportunity to, to start your day with your devotions and then after that spend a little bit of time saying all right lord uh, give me some divine strategy on who and how i can minister the gospel um because that's what we're called we're called to do this it's very clear the the, the bible is very clear on um on on the fact that that's what we're created for uh, you know, a verse I go back to time and time and time again is uh, Matthew 28, Great Commission. Uh, and, and from 18 to 20, uh, it says, Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. And then he sends, right? This is the command. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely the promise is, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Right? So when we break down this command, this, this uh, great commission, this piece of scripture, um, he, he's, got, he's saying a few comforting but direct things to us that don't change. They don't change because of the circumstances we're in. They don't change because of the environment around us. They don't change because of the coronavirus. They don't change because of leprosy. They don't change because of sickness. They don't change because of health. They don't change because of poverty. They don't change because of riches. They don't change because of happiness or sadness or anything. The, the, the commands of God, the promises of God, uh, the authority of God, the call of God does not change. Yeah. God has not changed. Yeah. So what he's saying to us is, right? So we look at this and you go, oh, well, well, it's therefore go. Well, I can't go. I'm stuck at home. Well, it says go and make disciples. So the go is intentionality. The go is don't stop where you are. Don't say oh, this is it. It's the, the just status quo. Uh, we, we actually have to say, no, no, no. I, I need to look for opportunities to step out and make disciples. I have to look for opportunities to share my faith. And, and uh, sometimes that can be minimized. But what we've actually done in going around uh, every week, we're talking about there's not one of you who doesn't have somebody you can share your faith with. So you've either got people in your own 
home and your own families who should be such a burden on your heart to get saved. Like it should just be pumping through your body. I've got to get these people saved. Or you've got people on social media or you've got people in your community or you've got people at work or you've got family, whatever. We've all got people we can share with. So all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to him. It's in his name that we go in all authority. So there's nothing that, that supersedes this. There's nothing over this because all authority has been given to him to send us, to give us this command. So therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything he has commanded. And then surely he's with you. The end of the age. Very cool, right? So in being intentional is the key. Um, you know, using scripture to do so, working out how it applies and what it applies is, is, a, is a thing that we need to call on God for and ask God, hey, reveal me the strategy, reveal to me uh, the way in which I can do that um, and, and, and so on and so forth. Makes sense. Yeah? Yeah. Good. All right. Who's got their Bibles with them? We have just two. Bibles? Uh, Bible College? Bibles, Bible College? Very good. Very good. It's good to have your Bible at Bible College. <laughs> Fez is like, it's on my phone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Okay, Luke 10. Turn to Luke 10 for me. Mm. <clears throat> All right. Uh, verse 30. Verse 30 says this again, Samaritan. Very cool. Verse 30. In reply, Jesus said, yeah, he's telling a story. He's talking about what happened. A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he fell into the hands of robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So too a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he travelled, came where the man was. And when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, took him to an inn and took care of him. The next day, he took out two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said. And when I return, I'll reimburse you for any extra expense that you have. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? Now, this, is a, this is a powerful piece of scripture. Verse 30 to 36. Uh, we see here a great uh, uh, picture of, of discipleship. Um, it can be used for a pattern of early discipleship. Um, and, 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 and from the start point, evangelism to discipleship. You're going, okay, or, or what do you mean? How does that work? So we have here a scenario and you can, there's a, a, a few pieces to this puzzle. Um, that if we had lots of time, we would we would unwrap, and I'd encourage you to to have a look at this piece of scripture and go through it because it's kind of cool. And looking at why the priest and why the Levite might have crossed over from one side to the other, and um, lots of that uh, in a in a real nutshell or breaking it right down is um, is because we live in a world that's the same then as it is now where we often put ourselves first. And um, the story says that this man. Um, was laid out on the road and, and half dead. And uh, he, if he dead, one of the things that for the priests at that time, if they had gone and touched a dead body, they would have to then spend seven days isolated, 
right, which we can relate to now, um, a way so they could go away and, and become clean again. Um, and it would have been a big disruption to their world. And same for the Levites, the same process would have taken place. So what's happened is they've seen this person in need, seen this person's uh, life in turmoil, seen this person's life, uh, not how their life is and thought, oh, that looks like too hard a work. That will be too much of an inconvenience on my life. That's going to be a burden on me because society is saying, society is telling me that I can't be close to someone who is naked or I can't be, uh, I can't get myself contaminated or I can't, whatever. You see the similarities here. Um, and, and society is going to treat me this way and this is how I'm supposed to be. And, you know, all these things about uh, the way we think are conjured up just in a, the first little part of this. Um, but then the real picture that we want to take away here is um, the picture of this Samaritan, right? Uh, it, I, I just love this story because um, the Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was. When he saw him, he took pity on him, mm -hmm. right? So he saw somebody in a situation who hadn't been saved, who hadn't been set on the path, who hadn't been looked after, that had been trampled and trodden and, and, and pushed down uh, and, and by the world, by situation, by circumstances, and something in him changed. So he took pity on him. So he actually had a heart for somebody else. He was looking for the opportunity and he took uh, pity on him went over to him with no bandaged his wounds. So he had no concern about, uh, you know, he didn't, didn't say he stopped for a while and looked around in a certain situation. Are the robbers still here? Might I get beaten? What are people going to think if I go out and help this guy? Oh, does that mean I'm going to be unclean and not going to be able to do my normal job? This is going to take time and effort and so on and so forth. No, he went over and he bandaged his wounds. Right? Then he put him on his own donkey. Mm. Right? That th this is this is important that we we pick this up, because it doesn't say he put him on a donkey. He put him on his own donkey. Yeah. Mm. He didn't know this guy. He came across a beaten, naked man that had been beaten half to death, left for dead. People were walking around him to get to avoid the situation rather than help. This guy stops, bandages wounds, and then gives of himself, puts him on his own donkey, right, to take him somewhere to be cared for, to take him to the inn to be looked after. Then puts in his own money from his own pocket, his own resource, his own thing that would have been to help himself in order to help this stranger and set him on a path. And this is such a picture of what we as Christians, as disciples of Jesus, what we're called to do, that it's not about self, it's about others. It's about loving God and loving others. Uh, and, and, and how we do that, this particular story has a great picture for that because he's assessed to what the need, he's looked for what the needs are. He's uh, checked in and, and, and seen what's going on in this situation and thought, how can I help? There's wounds on the bandage of them. What do I mean by that? I mean, uh, but Philomena brought it up really nicely before we're just talking about uh, this girl in her sphere of influence, um, that by her language, by the things she's saying, she can hear that she uh, has some insecurity and some, some self-worth issues. She doesn't feel like she's good enough, right? That's her wounds. Mm. Mm, absolutely. Right? by encouraging and by uh, words of affirmation and by speaking life into her about how God sees her, Philomena is bandaging her wounds, mm -hmm. right? By, you know, this is, and this is what I mean by, by we've, got to, we've got to see what the needs are. We've got to look for the opportunities um, to, to, to bandage the wounds. It started off by hearing about it. So, you know, the story that, and this is what I'm saying about when we're using scripture uh, and then put it into paraphrase or use it in a, uh, an adapt it to 
common day conversation, so we're not reading old King James version. Um, you know, the story that Philomena shared with us is very similar to this story because many others would have heard the same language coming from this girl, yeah. but not noticed, not taken pity on her, yeah. right? Uh, and then not taking the time to, man, it's too much effort. I've got my own problems. I don't feel secure about myself. I, you know, get over it. You do your thing, I'll do my thing because I've got enough problems of my own. But no, no, that's not what we're called to do. It's to stop and go, okay, how can I help? Bandaging wounds. Now, wounds will look uh, have all sorts of different things and sometimes people can't even articulate to you what their wounds are. They can't even tell you what their problem is. And And this girl that Philomena was talking about, uh, probably doesn't even realise that her wounds are showing. Yeah. So, um, you know, we have to ask God for, for help in that. And so the, the Good Samaritan uh, saw, took pity, uh, bandage wounds, put on his own donkey, right? This would have slowed him down. This would have been an inconvenience. This would have been, uh, no, no, taken off track, off course, you know, like this is a whole thing. And, and again, I'm not advocating... Uh, breaking any rules or going out of house or anything, but this is that, oh, I'm supposed to be self-isolating. I'm supposed to be away from everybody. I'm supposed to be in contact with anybody or anything, but there's someone in trouble. Well, what do I do? Yeah. What's my response? You know, and, and again, I'm not suggesting anything. I'm just saying this is what we have to think about. This is the priest and the Levite walked around this guy because it was an inconvenience to them and could have caused them to have to isolate for a time or, or you know, do a ceremonial washing and all of these things. But that's not what the Good Samaritan took out of it. He said, no, no, I'm going to go and help. I'm going to put him on my own donkey. I'm going to take him somewhere safe. What's somewhere safe? Where's somewhere safe? The presence of the Lord is safe. This is a place to be fixed and renewed and rebuilt and healed, right? That's what the presence of the Lord is. So the safe place, the inn you're taking this person to is, is a relationship with Jesus where I see your hurt, I see your pain, I'm going to sit with you, I'm going to help bandage some of those and I'm going to take you to a safe place. I'm going to introduce you to the healer to the redeemer, to the restorer, to salvation. And in that process, I'm committed to this process is what I'm, saying. I'm so committed to this process that I'm going to use my own time and, and I'm going to put you on my own donkey, my own way of getting there. I'm going to take you there myself so I know you get there. I'm not going to outsource it to somebody else or get somebody else to take you or call a friend or phone a friend or call the pastor, call the priest or the Levite who wouldn't stop in the first place. I'm going to put you on my own donkey and take you there, right? Then once you're there, I'm going to invest into you. I'm going to make sure it says that he gave two coins straight away, right? He contributed to this guy's uh, restoration, contributed to this guy's healing, contributed to this guy's um, shelter, to this guy's comfort, to this guy's salvation by investing into it. Now, I'm not saying that's always financial. What I'm saying is it's intentional and it's a, 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 a giving of self, time, resource, uh, and focusing on somebody else's uh, eternity rather than our own. And then after putting into a safe space, so I liken this to, um, you know, bandaging somebody up and helping them get through some of their wounds and all of that kind of thing. So they're in a place where they can maybe make a decision to follow Jesus, which is awesome. They're, you know, make a decision to follow Jesus, get them linked in with the church, but then not leave it at that. So it says that he go two coins, linked in, you know, looked after, sheltered, uh, clothed, and then uh, goes, and I will come back and cover any expense that's incurred. And that's that kind of like, I I'm going to partner with you. I I'm going to stay on this journey with you. So although right now I'm leaving, I I I'm, not I'm not actually gone because this is an investment that I'm going to stick with and I don't care what the cost is because it's an investment. Yeah. So isn't it, this is another great story. The Bible is such an amazing story amazing i just love the bible i could sit for hours and hours and read and talk about this stuff and my i've actually probably got to get a pen like and work out the bits i don't highlight i highlight more of my bible than not i don't know it doesn't make sense um but the 
it's just so exciting to see these pictures. And when you peel them apart and you go, okay, Lord, what are you showing me here? And this uh, short piece of scripture, these, these six verses uh, in, in Luke chapter 10 is, is a pattern of restoration of evangelism to discipleship. This is that next step. So we talked uh, last week that the John 4 is evangelism, the, the seed, right? The, the conversation the initial conversation here is the lord then here's how we get somebody to there and then this one is how do we take that next step of of um of of knocking off some of the rough edges to help get somebody to a place of encounter how do we help somebody get to a place of discipleship and decision and so on and so forth so john 4 luke 10 uh both samaritans um incredible stories of, of, of um, evangelism to discipleship transition. Uh, and remember, it's about intentionality. We need to be looking for opportunity because we're not going to come across somebody beaten and naked on the street all the time uh, physically, but we will come across that all the time, uh, you know, figuratively and, and people are, uh, uh, in all sorts of situations, you know, like, and I love that um, the story that Philomena shared as she's sharing it. I was thinking, man, this is so cool. Lines up so well with this Bible story, um, just about banded wounds and, and partnering and investing with. And Philomena's talking with this girl every day and then saying, I know we're here for study, but I, I'm actually going to, I'm going to, I'm going to take a withdrawal out of my own time and my own space and my own need to invest into your walk because that's what discipleship's about. So my encouragement this week, join these two Samaritan stories together. John 4, Luke 10, they are, they link in, they, they, they end up being a synergy of evangelism to discipleship and, and it's being intentional about it. Does that make sense? Yep. Look for the wounds, bandage the wounds, Put them on your own donkey, invest your own coin, invest your own time uh, into somebody else's salvation. And that's the evangelism to discipleship. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. Any thoughts, any questions? I have a thought. Yes. Uh, so actually, uh, that's what uh, when you talked about it going to cost us is that um, I always, uh, you know, had an understanding that God was speaking is that, you know, it cost a everything for jesus to give us that gift including the last drop of his blood and to water everything it cost him uh, to give this gift uh, so in that terms we are going to give them we are going to direct them to that gift so it's going to cost us to yeah uh, and but but this greatest gift that we can ever give it to anyone instead Ooh. of our material gift so I think it's okay to cost us a little bit. It's okay. That's right. That's right. Yeah. It's a biblical pattern. Biblical pattern. Very good. Love it. Anyone else? Closing thoughts? Neil? No closing so thoughts? So good on this end. Okay. Remy, closing thoughts? <laughs> Thumbs up. <laughs> Great. Ian, Narell? Oh, it's just so true about these wounds, whether they be um, just emotional things that you have to um, build people back up again or, or whether it be something that someone has gone through. I mean, I remember one situation, someone we knew had been scammed out of money, had no food, and we gave them some money so they could have food for their family for a while. It took them a long time to get over the fact that they didn't have to pay it back. Um, because it's so different to the world, you know? Yeah. We just got got opportunities everywhere. We just mm. got to see yeah, them. That's and right. yeah. True. That's it. And that's that. Remember, I keep saying be intentional, be intentional, be intentional. Remember the description, the, the definition of uh, evangelism is the intentional act. It's an intentional act. It's not a bite. It's not a, oh, oops, I tripped over this. It's looking for the opportunities. Yep. Yeah. Caroline, closing thoughts? Not really. All good. Good? Okay, yeah. cool. So next week, right, we've covered we've covered over this. John 4, we've got a great pattern here. Luke 10, we've got the next steps. Let's marry them together. They work in perfect synergy. 
uh, and they're Samaritans, so they're kindred spirits. <laughs> but we want to we want to partner these together. So next week the report is again how in this troubling time, and I know this is hard. Don't get discouraged. We are in a, it's a strange time, but man, you guys are going to be mm. on fire evangelists. At the, I'm telling you, you got, people will write books about you guys. There'll be stories. They, when the, the, the new revised version, uh, pa- Pastor Derek's uh, version of the Bible, new, new, new what is it, NDV, um, the new Derek version, is going to have the likes of Ian Norell and Neil and Philomena and Faramy and Carolyn and Cosmo all in there. Uh, you know, the evangelists of the era, it, I'm excited to see it, but, but just... You know, look for the opportunities. Don't get discouraged. It's not there's you know, just because it's hard doesn't mean it's an attack on us. It means that God's saying, hey, I've got I've got some good things planned, and we just got to look for them. Yeah. Uh, you guys are incredible, and I just count it a privilege uh, to get to spend some time with you. Let me pray for you before we close. Heavenly Father, I just uh, Lord, I'm just so grateful for these amazing people and. And that we get to uh, dive in and and uh, and just uh, learn a bit more about you together. Uh, that you continue to give us fresh revelation and, and encourage us and excite us about what you're doing, even in a time where the rest of the world is worried and concerned. Lord, the fact that you can fire us up and um, and just fill us fill us with uh, joint excitement. Lord, we're just in awe of who you are. So, uh, Lord, I pray uh, that. Every one of these mighty warriors is uh, just aware and open to opportunities uh, to share their faith, that you strengthen them, that you protect them, uh, give them the words they need and just the uh, spiritual covering that they require. Lord, uh, fill them with your Holy Spirit. Signs and wonders come straight after them, uh, sharing your word with others. Father God, bless them abundantly, bless their families uh, and lead people into a relationship with you uh, through the words of these uh, disciples of yours. Father God, bless them. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 amen.